Hi there cutters and welcome to my mackerel walkthrough guide for Shipbreaker. We're going to dismantle a tier 5 mackerel together and my plan is to show you the basics of this very beginner friendly ship and how to dismantle it as easy and quick as possible and how to slowly get your work procedure to get that whole thing towards getting that whole thing salvaged in one shift because if you get if you're good at it you can easily get these things in one shift into the smelters so let's get right started shall we so to get ourselves a little bit fast towards let's uh, reel ourselves in and i want to start and uh, grab myself the uh the antennae what I really like about the uh, mackerel in general is that it's a ship which is extremely good if you just want to grind your Lynx tokens real fast or just uh, progress real quick. It's a very very friendly and uh, chill ship. So first we gotta get in and decompress. That's true for every ship but luckily with the mackerel we only have one room to worry about and that's this one the decompressors are usually found above the door or in the vicinity of that after that's been done we're going to open the doors again and let's see first we're going to check if there's any data drives inside here but doesn't look like they are and the next important thing is oh here's the data drive I want to pick it up not shove it away and then we get all the way back there and I really like to start dismantling my mackerels from this point so first uh, solve these grab the computer and tether that thing really quickly in there so other side does the same thing we're going to just take care that we're not going to split saw into anything else if you're insecure with the usage of the split saw it's completely okay just uh, keep in mind that using the stinger is safe but slower so the more you get used to the safe usage of your split saw the faster you will become with your uh with your uh work so it turned out that the interior of the walls here was not decompressed yet but nothing bad happened there was just a suction of air which was friendly enough to remove the uh, aft portion of the ship for us so sometimes there are doors leading into the um, walls of the ship which weren't available here so we actually had no chance but to do, but to decompress this way but that's not necessary not necessarily a catastrophe decompression is only a problem if the uh, torrent of air starts to slam items uh, together that are explosive now after that has been removed the only thing we're interested in anymore is up the rear section of the ship we're going to laser away that thing just take care that you don't uh, split saw too hard into the uh, back panel here because the thruster cap is something we might we, we might want to keep so oh here we go don't know why it was stuck but yeah we came for the uh, power bank aka the thruster which is one of the most valuable parts of the ship and the whole aft section now can be just tethered into this uh into the processor we got the power we got the uh, we got the fuel tanks and uh, everything else which was interesting about that so let's get right into the ship so here goes the same procedure we're split sawing carefully where we can and while passing the nacelle i'm uh, already cutting that thing out because the nacelles are really really valuable just check it's just a double one sometimes they have two cut points sometimes they have four so now we're going to get inside there i really like to do the interior wall section um after the aft section because that's just uh, working out quite decently here i work with the split saw more carefully because i don't want to accidentally hurt the airlock repeat that process on both sides 
and keep in mind that it's... Oh, okay. I didn't destroy it completely. So luckily the items are not immediately dying when you laser into them. Okay, so now after that's all done, you can just uh, pop off this uh, part of the uh, ship and we're just uh, tethering it in. So now with this thing, always keep in mind you want your tethers on the on these outside structures. Makes everything a lot easier. And here, just casually yoink that uh, airlock console. It's just valuable and it would be a waste to let that go. All right, we're now slamming the remaining items into the barge. So there we go. Oh yeah, that was a failed tether. So... I just want to spend as many tethers as possible before I go back to the kiosk. Whenever you misplace your tether and you notice it, you can also pr just press the Y button to cancel it before it goes off. So here we go. Power unit. And now let's head back to the kiosk. I always try to spend as many tethers as possible before I head back to the kiosk because obvious reasons. All right, there we go. So just uh, replacing our tethers. And now we're going to continue the work on the other side. I'm using these uh, spikies to uh, to go faster than I could. All right. So this side goes the same way, but luckily there's no airlock in the way, so our work will be even easier. So here goes the nacelle again. And if the backdraft of your uh, split saw ever worries you, I always hold down the control key while I'm split sawing so the backdraft doesn't get me. So here I'm, draft I'm drifting a little bit above because I, under no circumstances, I want to have the laser in the, in the reactor. I think we don't need to talk about why. I rather take uh, a couple of shots more. And there we go. Now we're on the uh, opposite side, but the procedure is the same. We pop off that uh, piece of the hull, and now we start tethering these bad boys into the processor. If you did everything correctly, they go off like that. If they don't, there is an, there's a cut point left in the wall, which needs to be taken down. So now we're at the reactor. Always take care that you have a free line of fire if you uh, once you go towards the reactor because it goes meltdown once you pull it out of the socket. So sometimes these interior walls have stuff like uh, fuel uh, fuel pipes and stuff like that and well, all they do is they hold the, the wall sections together. So fuel pipes are, or, or wires, sometimes they also use wires, just act as a connector for these wall parts. That means you can either ignore them and work with larger portions of wall, or sever them at some point and uh, work around with that. Maybe I'll make a separate tutorial about this type of mackerel too. But now we're right in the middle of the dismantling of that part. Here it's quite important that we notice that there's uh, cargo on the on the bottom plate and we want to salvage that before we toss away the bottom plate. These, uh, these loot items are very very valuable and it's uh, absolute waste to let them go, uh, to let them get away. Not so much money-wise, but they mean a lot for your uh, links, token stuffs, and that's really, really important. So, now we're severing the bottom plates, and now we're severing the top plates. It's really important that we dislodge these items while we're at it, but 
I actually want to avoid it as much as possible. So the most attractive thing is to cut these uh, plates away as quick as possible. But we have to uh, dislodge them from the ground. Because we obviously don't want to put these uh, crates into the processor as well. But once we're here, we can now... Wait a sec. Well, let's do this first. We're here. So that's the last plate. And once that's done, as you can see, you can just uh, pick up all these crates and just fire them in a direct uh, direction downwards. You can also just grab all the door locks and uh, the electronics which you want to pick up and just uh, fire them downwards. That's so much faster than trying to do it uh, while turning around. And here we can also do a little trick. The glass is a little bit of a waste. You can, you could also extract the glass, but if you want to go real quick with the cockpit, removing the glass enables you to pull out the stuff way easier. You can also just adjust your angle a little bit. I found that this angle was way easier to manage than going from the door, especially with those long storage bins or the electronics. I had a lot of trouble extracting them in the past, but once I went through the window, my work time went a lot faster. So this one is one of my personal secret uh, tips that really did save me like, I don't know, 20 seconds or even 30 in the cockpit section, because it's really amazing how much difference it, it makes. All right, same goes for uh, just tossing that stuff from the upside down. So, we're going to make our tethers work for us while we get back to the kiosk. Because we're practically done. Let's see. Oh, no tethers remaining. Let's see if we're uh, able to do it. So. So, we almost have three minutes left. I'm quite happy with the outcome. So that means we could have uh, went for even a little bit of a more thoroughly work here. Let's uh, check out if everything works out. Yes. So, turns out that I forgot a few boxes there. Let's uh, head over there. There's a couple of items uh, still floating around there. A few crates that I missed. All right, let's make sure that this thing goes into the furnace. But yeah, that's uh, that's your average mackerel. This, uh, the, the, the construction of it, like the front, middle and aft section, they are almost identical every run. And therefore you can work around with them just like that. Keep in mind that every mackerel has some sort of specialty though some sort of cargo or scientific equipment and all these things. But these tricks I worked around here, they apply for pretty much every mackerel um, model out there. Just keep in mind that when there are cables or pipes involved, for the pipes, always flush them empty before you do your other uh, magics. That's really important. Pipes can be cut, wires can be cut. If they bother you, just cut them and uh, twine. That's just how it is. So let's check out how much money we got. We earned ourselves 2.6 millions in less than 15 minutes. And I hope that was somewhat helpful for you. So this method also works for more difficult uh, levels of the mackerel. As we see, we had plenty of time left over. And yeah, feel free to drop me a comment down below if you have anything to add or anything on your mind. Mind, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. Also, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It would help a ton to make it more visible. Also, check out my channel. There you'll find daily content made by me. And if you like that, 
subscribe, turn on those notifications, and you won't miss a thing. In the description below, you'll also find my Twitch channel, and among those, also my credentials for financial support. I do all this work for free, and I won't stop doing it for free, but your support would be more than appreciated. Either way, thanks so much for watching, and have a nice time, and goodbye.